من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I begin in the name of the Almighty God, the Compassionate, the Merciful, the one who has created everything in utmost perfection. And may the peace and blessings of the Almighty God be upon his pure and beloved messenger, the peak of his creation, the symbol of humanity, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi. And his immaculate progeny of the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, especially the leader of our time, the awaited savior, Al Imam Al Mahdi Ajalallahu Ta'ala Faraja. May Allah hasten his reappearance and make us all amongst his sincere and dedicated servants. I extend to you all my sincerest condolences on the eve of the 11th of Muharram. Shama Gariban. When you examine what happened in Karbala, you find that the real tragedy for the family of Imam Hussein started on the afternoon of the day of Ashura, when they lost their Imam, when they lost their guardians, when they lost their protectors, and the women and children were taken as captives. This was a tragedy that was very heavy on the Ahlul Bayt for their women to be taken as prisoners of war. Da'bil al Khuza'i, the famous poet, he once read lines of poetry in the presence of Al Imam al Rida alayhi salam. And there was a curtain, the women were also listening. When Da'bil reached this line in his poem, the woman broke into tears. The wailing, the wailing and the crying was very loud. He says in this line of poetry in Arabic, The women of Ibn Ziyad, they're in their palaces covered but the family of the Prophet is in the deserts. La ilaha illallah. It's a very grave tragedy. When Al Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was martyred in Karbala, according to one narration, the angels of the heavens, of the skies, they began to cry excessively. And they said to Allah, Oh Allah, how can something like this happen in Karbala? To give them consolation, the hadith states, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed them a vision of the 12 imams and specifically the nine imams who come from the line of Hussein. They saw all of them sitting. One of them was standing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the angels, I will avenge the death of Hussein by that Qa'im, by the one who's standing. He is the Mahdi. Through him, I shall avenge the death of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So that gave the angels consolation. Indeed, one of the titles of Al Imam al Mahdi is Al Muntaqin, the one who will seek vengeance. And the slogan of his companions when he reappears is Ya Litharat al Hussein. We demand justice for what happened to Hussein. We'll not forget what happened in Karbala. Now, the question is how will Imam al Mahdi seek revenge? We know that the killers of Imam Hussein السلام, died over 1,300 years ago. So, how will the Mahdi seek revenge from them? There are three possibilities here or three applications to this revenge. Number one, an Imam al Mahdi will seek practical revenge by establishing justice. Those people who stood in the face of Imam Hussein, what were they really trying to stop? They were trying to stop divine justice because they knew about Abdullah al Hussein, if he rules, if he's empowered, 
If the people support him, he's going to rule by the Quran and justice. People did not want that because there are selfish people who have their personal agendas. They don't want justice. Why did people fight Imam Ali salam so much? Because of his justice. So Imam al-Mahdi will establish that global government on earth. And by establishing justice, he basically will continue the mission of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. <laughs> that is practical revenge <coughs> from the enemies of Imam Hussein. And that's why we have a narration that says Imam al-Mahdi will appear on the night of Ashura in Masjid al-Haram. The call will be made in Ramadan on the day of Laylatul Qadr. But the Imam salam will be gathered with the 313 companions in Masjid al-Haram on the night of Ashura. So on the 10th of Ashura, the Imam will appear and start establishing global justice. Now, why the 10th of Muharram? To show the world that the message of Imam Hussein did not stop. The martyrdom of Imam Hussein was not in vain. The Mahdi shall continue the legacy and the message of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. And in doing so, that's practical revenge. And by the way, that's a very important lesson for us. Sometimes you have people who are jealous of you, they may be your enemies, they hurt you, they talk about you, they try to bring you down. And sometimes you're full of rage, you also want to seek revenge. You know what the best revenge is? The best revenge is be successful, ignore them. Your success hurts them. Be more successful. Have more tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't care about what they're doing. Because if you go and fight back, you just drag yourself to their level. It's like someone angers you, throws something at you, and there is a coal of fire. There's charcoal. You want to pick that charcoal to burn that person. Okay, maybe you'll end up burning that person, but you'll burn your own hands too. Keep away from it. The best revenge for those who hate you, be more successful. Focus on your own life. Focus on your akhirah. That's the best revenge. So Imam al-Mahdi will avenge the death of Imam Hussein by establishing global justice. That's the first way. The second way, my dear brothers and sisters, and this one's very important. We have a hadith that states the one who accepts in his heart an act of injustice, Allah considers him an accomplice and a partner in crime. If someone dies unjustly, and I'm okay with it, I don't care, I'm okay with it. Allah on the day of judgment will consider me a partner in that crime. The Prophet has a hadith about this. All the Imams of Ahl al-Bayt have a hadith about this. There are some people throughout history who did not condemn what Yazid did to Imam Hussein. Imam al-Mahdi will seek revenge from them. Yes, the killers of Imam Hussein died years ago. But what about people who continue their path? Evil ones, those who have hatred for the Ahl al-Bayt. Those who accuse Imam Hussein salam, of doing wrong by going to Iraq. Until today, my dear brothers and sisters, we hear them. Some of them are speakers. Some of them are so-called scholars. I myself saw a few of them. One of them is called the Grand Mufti. He was asked about Imam Hussein rising against Yazid. He said, no, Yazid was a Khalifa who's shar'i, meaning a legitimate caliph. And Hussein should not have done that. That means you don't condemn what happened to Hussein. Imam al-Mahdi will seek revenge from these people, my dear brothers and sisters. Because they accepted, they accepted to what happened to Imam Hussein. And we curse them in our ziyadahs. May Allah curse a people, a group of people who heard about Karbala. And they were okay with it. They didn't care. The third, my dear brothers and sisters, the possibility here is the raj'a. We believers believe in the return. That when Imam al-Mahdi will rise, a group of believers, they will be resurrected to fight with him. There's a lot of evidence for raj'a. There is solid evidence for raj'a. And therefore, we find that not only will the good ones be resurrected, 
but also the evil ones will be resurrected. The enemies of Ahlul Bayt, when Imam al-Mahdi reappears, they will be resurrected and Imam al-Mahdi will seek revenge from them to show the world how evil they were. To show the justice of Allah on earth before the day of judgment. There's evidence for Raj'ah even in the Quran, in Surah An-Naml, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, before the day of judgment, a group of evil people shall be resurrected. Yes. A group of evil people shall be resurrected. So that's how Imam al-Mahdi will seek revenge. My dear brothers and sisters, Imam al-Mahdi is the Imam of our time. Let's learn from the lesson of Imam Hussein alayhi salam to always be with the Imam of our time. Look at Umar ibn Sa'ad. From the outside, what's different about him than let's say Habib ibn Mazahir, Zuhair ibn Al-Qayn, or even Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam. From the outside. From the outside, they're both Muslims. They both say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. They both prayed. Yes, Umar ibn Sa'ad on the day of Ashura, he led his people in prayer. He prayed. Many of them had gone to Hajj. Many of them read Quran, memorized Quran. So what's different? Ma'rifah of the Imam of your time. Umar ibn Sa'ad fought the Imam of his time. He did not follow the Imam of his time. And he was damned to eternal hellfire because of that. The lesson is, to be with our Imam of time, with Imam Al Mahdi Ajallahu Ta'ala Farid. And the hadith from Imam Al Sadiq states if you really want to be with Imam Al Mahdi, then wait. But how do you wait? By being pious and exhibiting the best akhlaq. Make a commitment tonight with Aba Abdullah Al Hussein. Oh, Aba Abdullah, I've listened 10 majalis or more about you during these 10 days. I learned about your path, about your akhlaq, about your piety, your tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will implement this in my life going forward. Make a commitment, my dear brothers and sisters. Imam al Hussein sacrificed his life for the religion of God. So you can pray on such a night, make a firm commitment with your prayer. I'll never skip another prayer to honor the sacrifice of Imam Hussein. The hijab, our dear sisters, Lady Zainab السلام, sacrificed for the hijab so she can keep the hijab for you. Hold on to your hijab. That's how you show support to the Imam of your time. Respecting your parents, having a good relationship with your children and always guiding them to the right path. Being mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your business and in your income, halal and haram. Imam Hussein السلام, makes a very powerful statement about his enemy on the day of Ashura. You know what he says? Do you wonder why so many people came to fight Imam Hussein knowing that he was on the right path? The Imam says their stomachs are filled with haram. And when we say haram, it doesn't mean haram food only. That's one type of haram food. Haram income. Income that's made from haram, from sinful ways from fraud, from cheating others, usurping the rights of others. One dollar if you usurp from your business partner, from someone's inheritance in your family, you cheat someone, or you, you engage in haram business, selling alcohol, for instance, or investing in a haram business. That eventually makes you misguided. The Imam says, these people who came to kill me, that's their problem. They allowed the shaytan to overpower them because of all the haram they fed themselves all those years. Make a commitment tonight with Abi Abdullah al Hussein that in my business life, I will be mindful of you and your message. And that's how I honor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ashura is not the end. Today we finish the majalis or tomorrow or next day and that's it. Ashura is the beginning that gives us the energy to continue throughout the year. But it was indeed a very difficult tragedy. My dear brothers and sisters, now I want to take your hearts to Karbala. 
on the afternoon of the 10th of Muharram to see what happened over there. Ya Allah, what did the family of Imam Hussein experience? O oh, believers, after Al Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam was massacred, you know what they did? The first thing they did, they had the horses <coughs> run in the battlefield and trample the body of the Imam. Ya Allah, you know what they did? They blindfolded the horses so they couldn't see the body, so they would trample them. And then they attacked the tents of the women and the children. They set the tents to fire. Imagine now the women and the children, they've lost their guardians and protectors. Now they've set the tents to fire. Women started to run around, sometimes even barefoot. They were running in the hot desert uh, to save their lives. This scene of the women and children running while the tents were set to fire used to break the hearts of the Ahlul Bayt. Once Imam al-Sadiq his house was attacked during the era of the Abbasids. When Imam al-Sadiq, his house was attacked, there was a fire in his house. The next day, one of the companions of Imam al-Sadiq saw him crying excessively. He told him, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, you should be patient. Why are you crying so much? This is not the first time that you, Ahl al-Bayt, are oppressed like that. I know your house was attacked, but you're crying too much. The Imam said, no, that's not why I'm crying. But yesterday, when they put the flames in my fire, and I saw the women and children running from one room to another room, I remembered my aunts in Karbala running from one tent to another tent when it was set to fire. This scene, this scene would not be forgotten by the Imams of Ahl al-Bayt when they would remember that. Yes, they set the tents to fire. Hamid ibn Muslim was there in Karbala. He was a journalist reporter documenting the events. You know what Hamid says? Hamid says, I saw a young girl. Her dress, her clothes had caught fire. So I came next to her to help her put out the fire. Then I told her, Man anti, tell me, who are you? She looked at me, she told me, Ya Shaykh, al -Quran? Have you ever read the Quran, O oh man? He said, yes, I've read the Quran. Why? She told me, Ya Shaykh, have you read this verse in the Quran? As for the orphan, do not harm the orphan. Do not, do not harass the orphan. Do not be harsh with the orphan. Have you read this verse? I said to her, yes, I have. Why? Who are you? She told me, Ana yatimatu Abi Abdullah al Hussein. I am the orphan of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. He realized this is one of the daughters of Imam Hussein. I told her, Come, you must be very thirsty. Let me take you to the river, drink some water. She said, Yes, I'm very thirsty. He says, I took her to the river when her eyes fell on the running water. She broke into tears. I told her, Drink from some, some from this water. She said, No. Uh, she said, how can I drink the water when the grandson of the Prophet was killed thirsty? She refused to drink water. Hamid ibn Muslim, he says, I, I, I was scared she's going to die from thirst. So I took her to the women and children. I gave her to her aunts, to Zainab. I told them, take care of her. She was lost and I helped put out the fire. Ya Allah, what happened in Karbala? One narration tells us that the enemy is led by Shimr ibn Dil Joshan. They went inside the tent of Al Imam Zayn al Abidin. They saw, they saw him lying on the ground, ill, not able to move. You know what Shim does? He comes to Al Imam Zayn al Abidin. The Imam was sleeping on a sheet. He violently pulled the sheet from underneath the Imam, hurting the Imam. Then he took out his sword. He was about to kill Imam Sajjad. When Lady Zainab came, she told him, you have no right to kill him. And then she fell on the body of Al Imam Zain Al Abideen. She told him, Shem, you'll kill me before you kill him. Stop, you have no right.
She protected the life of Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. Then Shamr, he retreated. They left. The fire was rapidly spreading. The Imam alayhi salam looked at his aunt Zainab. He told her, Amma, Amma alaykunna bil my dear aunt, leave. You have to flee the tents. The fire is going to spread rapidly here and it's going to burn you. Leave, leave the tents. But how can she leave? When Zainab was told to leave the tent, she said, how can I leave? When I have a gharib in the tent, how can I leave you, O Sajjad? Very difficult evening. This evening was for the family of Ahl al-Bayt. Oh, believers, the enemies, they attacked the tents. They looted whatever they could. Some of the children, they were wearing earrings, bracelets. The enemies attacked them, pulling the earrings from their ears, causing them to bleed. No mercy in their hearts whatsoever. But then when the night set in, Lady Zainab alayhi salam gathered all the women and the children. She wanted them to be saved from the enemies. She counted the women and the children to make sure that no one was missing. But then she found someone was missing. Where is Sakina? I do not see Sakina here. Lady Zainab goes out in the darkness of the night searching for Sakina. In the darkness of the night, in the battlefield, Lady Zainab hears a faint, low voice coming from towards the body of Imam Hussein salam. Lady Zainab goes close. She sees Sakina on the body of Hussein, hugging his neck. And she's saying, Aba Aba Ya Hussein, man alladhi azza waridak. My dear father Hussein, who's the one who severed your head? My dear father, who's the one who orphaned me? Zainab told her, Sakina, why did you come out here? It's dangerous. She said, I didn't know where to go. The enemy started to hit me with the sticks, with the back of the spears. So the only refuge I had was to come to the body of my father, Hussein. But what body? There was no head. The imam's head had been severed. Lady Zainab takes her back to the tents. She makes another count. This time she sees Rabab, the wife of Imam Hussein, missing. Rabab, where are you? She goes out to the battlefield. She goes to the desert. It's dark searching for Rabab. Yes, she hears a faint voice coming from Rabab. She drew near to her and she heard her talking to her dear beloved infant Ali Azgar. My dear beloved, my precious Ali. <laughs> Lady Zainab tells her, Rabab, what are you doing? Who are you looking for? She tells her, Zainab, do not blame me. The last time I saw Ali Azgar, I had no milk to give him. And he died thirsty. Now the enemies gave us some water. So now I'm able to nurse him. There's now milk in my body. I'm searching for my Ali to give him from that milk to nurse him. Ya Allah, Lady Zainab tells her, come back, Rabab. You have to go back to the tents. It's too dangerous out here. Yes, what a difficult night that was for the family of Ahl al-Bayt. Lady Zainab was exhausted, overwhelmed. This child says, Amma Abi, where is my father? Another says, where is my uncle? She had to quiet the orphans. Ya Allah, that night Lady Zainab did not skip her Salat al-Layl, her night prayer. She prayed, but with so much difficulty, and she remembered Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam in her prayer because the Imam had asked her to pray for him in her prayers. Oh, believers, then you know what happened after that when Lady Zainab alayhi salam gathered all the women and the children.
and the children were put to sleep. Lady Zainab was overcome with grief. She missed Imam Hussein. She missed Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. She had lost her sons in Karbala. Zainab did not now know where to go. Who's going to give her consolation? Zainab left in the darkness of the night. She found her way to the body of Imam Hussein. Oh, believers, she sat by the body of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Then she put her two hands under the body of Imam Hussein. She looked to the sky and she cried, Wa Muhammad. O Muhammad, the angels of the heavens, they send their prayers on you. This is your Hussein on the desert of Karbala. But he's drenched with his blood, Ya Rasulullah. مسلوب العمامة والرداء يا رسول الله they've looted his turban his cloak يا الله تقبل منا هذا القربان قربان نبيك محمد يا الله accept the sacrifice from us accept the sacrifice of محمد what a difficult night this was in Karbala, O oh believers. Let's remember the tragedy of this night. This is Shama Gariban. They had no one there in Karbala to protect them, to console them when the women and the children would cry. You know how the enemies, they'd console them? They would hit them with sticks, with the back of the spears. Now everyone together, let's remember this night, this very difficult night, through these lines of poetry. امشاب نوای کودکان امشاب نوای کودکان بر بام کیوان است شام غریبان است شام غریبان است امشاب بدشت کربلا امشب به دشت کربلا نالان یتیمانند تا صبح و گریانند امشب شام غریبان است شام غریبان است امشب به روی کشته ها امشب به روی کشته ها در نال مرغانند چون نی در افغانند شام غریبان است بر خاک بی غسل و کفن بر خاک بی غسل و کفن رعنا جوانانن خابید اوریانن شاب شام غریبان است بر غربت اجسادشان بر غربت اجسادشان عالم پریشان است شام غریبان است شام غریبان است raise your hands in dua my dear brothers and sisters in these moments with broken hearts and tears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised to answer our prayers raise your hand and let's recite this holy verse five times together بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم 
أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء 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 يا الله نسألك اللهم باسمك الأعز الأجل الأكرم يا الله 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 اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج واكشف عن غمه وهمه وحزنه واجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه والمستشهدين بين يدي اللهم اشفي كل مريض اللهم فرج عن كل مهموم اللهم اقضي دينا كل مدين اللهم غير سوء حالنا بحسن حالك اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا إلهي ارزقنا زيارة الحسين اللهم احفظ زوار الحسين اللهم ارزقنا شفاعة الحسين وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات نهدي ثواب سورة الفاتحة مسبوقة بالصلاة على محمد وآهل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين 